So it's now time to introduce our first panel, which will show different perspectives of sustainable tourism policies. The participants represent supranational entities covering a broad area of the Mediterranean. The moderator is Mr. Juan Daniel Núñez, editor at Smart Travel News, and the speakers are Mr. Octavi Bono, General Director of Tourism of the Generalitat de Catalunya and President of Nextdoor, Mr. Adam Bodor, uh, Bodor, Director of Eurovelo and the Advocacy European Cyclists Federation and Vice Chairman of the Tourist Manifesto, of the Tourism Manifesto, sorry. Mr. Milos Momot, Deputy Head of Unit Tourism, Emerging and Creative Industries of the European Commission. Mr. Marcello Scalisi, Director of Unimed, Mediterranean Universities Union. And Mrs. Anaëlle Lebian, Projects and International Cooperation Area Manager and Association of the Mediterranean Chambers of Commerce and Industry General Secretariat. Shaping sustainable tourism policies, views from the supranational level. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the first thing I need to do actually is to say sorry because uh, this morning when I wake up in, in Madrid to come here, I thought it was a very good idea to print my questions. Uh, and now I feel a bit bad about it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I promise not to eat steak tonight, I promise. But uh, actually, I couldn't sit on the phone. But it's, it's a bad excuse, and I know. But uh, I will improve, I can do it. So um, it, it, was, it was funny that, that Xavier will mention this, this report from the United Nations World Travel Organization, because as he was mentioning the results, we, were, uh, we journalists were getting actually the press release from that report just like an hour ago. Um, and the bottom line is actually on the first line. I want to read it to you. This, this is an, uh, an exact quote. It, it says, countries around the world are integrating sustainability in their tourism policies, but the evidence on the results of their implementation remains limited. Which is like, uh, it, this sounds nice, but it's like, not enough, right? It's like, good job, not enough. So my first obvious questions, question to all of you uh, here on the table is, why on earth are we not doing enough? Why is it so difficult? Why is it, is it even possible? I hope it is, but what is your impression on this? So I'd like to hear a bit from each one of you, and then we go one by one explaining what, what you actually do, your job. But first thing I, I, I would like to get from you is like a glimpse of why this isn't working. Maybe we, we can start from, from here with Adam. Adam. Thanks a lot, uh, and thanks a lot for the opportunity to be here with you. As you heard, I'm, resp I'm responsible for Eurovelo, the European Cycle Route Network. Yes. But also my other hat is the vice chair of the Tourism Manifesto, which brings together all the polluter and non-polluter uh, industries uh, in, within the tourism sector. So I have to tell you that we are always facing big discussion. From one hand, the discussion is to get enough recognition for tourism in general in Europe. I think my colleague from the Commission will uh, confirm it. Uh, so despite tourism is 10% uh, of the EU GDP, uh, represents 10% of the EU GDP, uh, tourism policies are not recognized well enough uh, in Europe. Within that topic, sustainable tourism is even a niche, and cycling tourism I'm dealing with is a niche within the niche. Uh, so uh, I have to tell you honestly that even tourism itself, once more, is not recognized. However, I think there are a lot of European policies which could influence tourism and sustainable tourism specifically. So when we are talking about having more sustainable tourism or more tourism in general, uh, we have to talk about policies which are not directly linked to tourism, but for example, linked to uh, transport policies, uh, passenger rights, or even the VAT, the value added tax regulations on the European level, uh, which currently, for example, the tax regulations are favoring uh, air traffic. So we can discuss about uh, these issues a lot, but uh, also the, the people's choices are really much influenced by the regulations, by uh, financial incentives, and also how the European Union is investing its uh, resources. We are advocating, from one hand, for more resources for tourism, one hat of me. Hmm. My other hat is in, of advocating that within the tourism resources, uh, the sustainability 
aspect should be taken into account. The European Union, from its cohesion uh, policy, uh, invests in tourism projects, but I don't see those indicators, uh, what were just mentioned in the keynote speech, uh, to be seen. We still hear about uh, tourism arrivals, uh, numbers of 500 million people coming uh, to visit different places in Europe. Actually, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, actually, the job creation is one, a little bit better because at least it shows some impact or the 10% of the GDP, the 400 billion euro. Yep. But within uh, that 400 billion euro, for example, cycling tourism is 40 billion euro. It's the same amount as the cruise ship uh, uh, industry. But what a different impact uh, in terms of environmental, social, or economic impact regarding SMEs. So I think both aspects uh, we should work on making the cake bigger for tourism and within that cake make it m to ensure that sustainable tourism is okay. there. Okay, yeah, so for, for us in, uh, in Askame, I don't know if it's okay. Can you hear her? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No? No. Okay, so for us in Askame, uh, the tourism is uh, very important. We represent the private sector of the Mediterranean and uh, because uh, tourism is a major pillar of the Mediterranean economy and represents the first sector in the region, especially due to its uh, geographic location, uh, with also its uh, great climate and uh, with uh, its uh, va wide variety of destinations. We know that the, all the Chamber of Commerce, all the private sector want to improve and to uh, develop the tourism and the sustainable tourism in the region. So our role as an um, as association of uh, Chamber of Commerce is to support the Chambers of Commerce, but also to support them to create synergy with uh, other um, important actors of the region in order to um, to develop new services and new activities for, uh, to improve the tourist uh, competitiveness. Uh, we have also to identify um, what are the key challenges for the region, what are the key challenges for the, for the north, for Europe, and also for the south of the Mediterranean, because there is a uh, lot of difference uh, in both shores of the Mediterranean region, so that's why we have to work together, and I think we think at Ascame, one of the main challenges regarding sustainable tourism is to um, work together and to cooperate uh, all together, not only the north from one side and the south from another side. Mm -hmm. Okay, Miwash, did I get it right? Miwash, yes. Awesome. Excellent. You got it very, very right. Um, I think that the answer to your question, because your question was why is it getting, why is the impact so uh, so uh, so low? So why yeah. is the progress so slow? I think the answer was given already by Professor uh, Font in uh, in the in the presentation just that we witnessed before the uh, coffee break, um, and I think he he put it rightly. I mean, there are it's really difficult because those are sometimes almost revolutionary things that need to be introduced by organizations, by complex, uh, complex organization and, and, and broader, uh, broader uh, sector uh, as such. We're talking about changing patterns at certain destinations, um, uh, but also the way individual businesses, tourist businesses are run. So we cannot expect that the change will be overnight. Uh, this is human factor included as well, but also the fact that uh, people naturally, and this is how capitalists work, will go for a low-hanging fruit, so where one can uh, monetize uh, the changes. So, um, and this is not necessary, is where the impact on, on sustainability would be the highest. But that's, that's, that's pretty much obvious, and I think the professor um, uh, put it um, uh, very nicely. Now, uh, I think what we need in order to improve things is, is, is more focus, and I think we're getting there slowly. I mean, the professor also said that uh, it's been already many, many years that people talk about sustainability of tourists, indeed. Uh, but from words to actions and then from to, to impacts, uh, it will again take time. Now, I believe, as on the EU, uh, or at least in the European uh, Union as the bloc of the countries, and the tourist policy of the European Union, we are at this stage when we are moving from words assessment into auctions, and this is increasingly visible. I mean, just to give you an example, I mean, if we, if we look 
into how the policy evolved. Still, in 2010, when we issued, when the European Commission issued communication on tourism, and this is de facto still a document that is still valid because we didn't issue any other communication afterwards on that spells out what the tourist policy on the European Union is. Um, even the title is quite telling because it talks about Europe, tourist destination number one in the world. So we're talking about, again, the number of tourists, growing business, getting more tourists, uh, looking uh, at, um, uh, at this from the perspective of how many people will come uh, to Europe and, and, uh, and spend time on entertaining themselves. Uh, or, or visiting places. Now, quite recently, and uh, as uh, last week only, we got the new Council conclusion on tourism. Again, um, this Council conclusions doesn't happen often. Again, it's been many years that we witnessed European Council, so okay, uh, member state um, discussing together the issue of tourism and actually coming to some uh, common conclusions. Um, now we have quite strong conclusions on tourism, and this is very much packaged around sustainability. So it's talking about mostly sustainable growth, and there are a number of messages there that, goes, uh, that show that the member state want the commission, want to cooperate among themselves also on departing from this uh, quantity-driven growth into more qualitative uh, development of uh, the tourist sector. No one denies that this is a big employer, no one denies that this is a big uh, contributor to the economy, this has to be maintained because we don't want a crisis in the European Union. Um, but things can be done differently, and this is well recognized uh, from, um, from the side of the member state. And it comes up as a message to the Commission. And we are particularly happy with this, uh, with these conclusions. And it's a very opportune moment because uh, in November, hopefully November this year, we will have the new Commission. So we will have a change of our leaders, of our, um, of our, um, of our decision makers. And from that, hopefully, from that uh, conclusions of, um, uh, from the Council, there will be some inspiration taken from what the agenda for the tourist policy will be for the next uh, five years. Um, we in DigiGrow, so in um, the Director General that deals with the tourist policy, uh, we are very excited and we're really hoping that, uh, that what will come from, a, from, a, from how this objective set by the member states, uh, how it will be now recognized by the new commission and whether we're going to have tools to work to actually um, deliver specifically on sustainability of the sector. Marcelo. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I have two comments about, um, because I am CO2 addicted. I have, I have to confess that for my work, <laughs> I have CO2 addicted, because as a director of a network of Euro Mediterranean universities, I travel a lot. I will try in the next life uh, to, to change this and to change work, probably. Um, and also, I will contribute for your dinner tonight. I give you my paper and you can use to it also my... Okay, okay. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, as director of a network as univer of University of Euro-Mediterranean universities, we work on different issues, and also tourism is one of our priorities, of course. Uh, but if you look at the situation of southern Mediterranean countries, uh, there is a huge potentiality on tourism. Uh, the, the discourse about how to improve tourism, that are key issues for the economic growth of southern Mediterranean countries, uh, very old. But then we have to uh, consider the situation of those countries. In southern, Medi southern, Medi southern European country, we had a, a big growth of tourism in the last year for the instability of some of southern Mediterranean countries after the revolution in Tunisia or in Egypt and so on. Uh, it's impossible from my perspective to talk about sustainability in southern Mediterranean countries looking at tourism. Without participation of people, it's impossible to discuss about sustainability. It's just a political debate. It's just an academic debate. But if we don't have a local community that participate in this process jointly uh, with the tourist actors uh, and looking at the development of local area and so on, it's impossible to re concretely to discuss about sustainability. And in no, most of the southern Mediterranean countries, unfortunately, the political situation uh, 
doesn't allow this kind of participation. Youth in 2011 in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Libya, in Syria, also in Yemen, they asked for participation, not only for democracy. First of all, they asked about participation. After eight years, the situation is still there. In Egypt, <coughs> in some way, we come back. In Tunisia, the economic situation is affecting, in some way, the, the democratic process, and so on. It's impossible to talk about how to improve policy on sustainability and so on, if, again, local community is not there. Our universities are trying to do something. Uh, first of all, adapting curricula for the new skills and so on. There is a huge demand of capacity building on this for our uh, university, but the main questions remain. How to improve the governance of university from one side, but also local communities on the other side. In southern Mediterranean countries, most of the local communities, they don't have any autonomy. Uh, the risk is that we look at the European dimension and we try to copy and past the experiences that we are doing in Europe to southern Mediterranean countries. Obviously, it doesn't work for several, several reasons. On the other hand, tourism could be very, very important to better understand this kind of society. We have a southern Mediterranean culture in our cities, in Barcelona, in Brussels, or in every European cities, but we don't know more or less nothing about their habits. Uh, we could also, also use tourism to better understand, and sustainable tourism in particular, to better understand this society, and probably we could change our idea, our perspective about these community that are around us, but we don't know, we probably we don't talk with them uh, in a very direct uh, way. Another issue that I would like to, to, uh, to address to, to about politically speaking, about European Union and so on, uh, on tourism, that, which is not related to tourism in particular, but is about the mobility of people. We are discussing about tourism, but on the other end, there, is a there are a lot of barriers for southern Mediterranean countries to come to Europe, looking at migration. I am Italian, probably you understand my position on this, on this issue. We are facing several problems in Italy, but also, you know, the situation in Spain and so on. But we, to solve this problem, it's quite important to improve the mobility. It's, it's exactly the contrary. We need to improve mobility and, first of all, mobility of students. I know that is another CO2 emission addicted problem, but I think that mobility of our students, both sides, could contribute to create this Mediterranean generation that we need. Through Erasmus program, we, in some way, create Europe. And again, if with an Erasmus Mediterranean, we could contribute to create this Mediterranean generation, which is the basis to recognize each other and to have a sustainable political uh, cooperation between us and also, why not, through also tourism. Okay. Yeah, so thank you also for the invitation. Um, I have to say that I'm here not just on behalf of the Catalan government, government, but also on behalf of uh, Nextdoor, which is an association about uh, 30 um, European regions involved in tourism and sustainability. The question was, if I understood why it's so difficult and why it's, it's going so slowly. And I think perhaps that uh, because there is not a clear idea about alternatives, for sure we need another model but uh, in, in order to, to, to change the, the, the one we have today. But perhaps this new one uh, is not clear. And also, uh, I don't know if people is ready to, um, to change the behavior or if they want. And if not, um, Sustainability will be just a nice word. So, if we don't have a clear alternative, if we don't are able to change our behavior, even saying not 
to something that we have today, things could be also uh, uh, difficult. And um, perhaps some of the measures uh, must be uh, regulated in a stronger way from the highest administration. And in Europe, um, we are building a structure, uh, perhaps facing the economical activities, but I don't know if with uh, enough um, political power and capacity, and that could be also a problem in order to be uh, um, more, uh, be more um, hard in terms of uh, to ask people to do something in a certain way. Mm. Alternatives, model, and perhaps the lack of uh, a real political structure on the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a, a few follow-up questions. Uh, so Marcel uh, uh, mentioned something like a, a new like Mediterranean generation, right? Which is, which sadly, maybe can't be us. It has to be a next generation. So it, it always sounds like it's going to be something done in the future. We depend on something done in the future, but I don't. But it seems like our planet doesn't have that much time. I mean, uh, do we even have time to wait for another generation to understand this and get together, or is there any chance we can still do something? What do you think? To me, you, you mentioned it. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, there is a, a, a. I have to say a story about the importance of activity that, in some way, professor and talking to my colleagues, are in some way responsible, uh, in some way a very good responsibility, in some case very bad responsibility that show us. Uh, the importance to start at least. Yeah. Because otherwise we remain where we are, or probably we are going in the worst direction. Uh, Palestine was, uh, uh, in the, at the end of 19th century, was uh, described by a professor traveling, intellectual and professor traveling uh, around the Middle East and so on, and not all in the south of Italy, and so it was described as uh, uh, a place without no people, without uh, few inhabitants, some um, very sauvage people, and it was the starting point of a creation, a false idea of Middle East that was the contribution for uh, the creation of Israel. Okay, now the situation is as it is. Okay, we have not, I don't want to enter in political debate, but just to say that the starting from something, we arrived slowly in another situation. Now we can't continue discussing as Mediterranean in, a, in the, this orientalization way, orientalism way, that Mediterranean is fantastic when, when we see an Arab around the corner, uh, <coughs> we, we are worried about, okay? I think that we have to start to change this paradigm, and you are, you are right, we are late. You more than me, probably. Uh, but our youth, our, our hope, both sides. And we have to try to teach them how it's important to know each other. And I think, again, Mediterranean generation is solution of a lot of issues, in particular this idea of cultural divide or uh, crash of civilization is a false issue and so on. But the only way to solve this is to, to move, to know each other, to see how the situation is, to understand that on the other side of the Mediterranean there is a society with the same problem that we have. And, um, and also to demonstrate to the other side of the Mediterranean whether we don't have any problem, any prejudice uh, related to that, or at least that we, know, we need to know each other. Uh, how to solve this, I don't know, but we have to start. It's quite urgent to start. The mobility of students is still there because they exist. There is 5,000 bourses per year that, thanks to Erasmus Plus program, are financed. 5,000 bourses is a huge number, but it's not enough. Cairo University, they have a quarter of a million of students. You can imagine, we are discussing about nothing. Uh, I think that Mediterranean generation is not only about students, it's related to youth is related to our society, is related to what we know about the other side. 
But without Mediterranean, Europe doesn't exist because we come from Mediterranean in some way. Uh, again, it's late, uh, but I think that we have to, in a moment where we are trying to build a new, new world, unfortunately, again, look at the Italian situation, the Hungarian situation, and others, it's absolutely mandatory to, to have a positive discourse about Mediterranean. Yeah. Also, why not, through tourism experiences. Okay. We, we don't have that much time left, so uh, I will beg you all to be brief for an hour. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, some of you, uh, a few of you mentioned uh, an obvious need of, for cooperation between countries, which is, uh, uh, and for us who work in Spain, we know this is particularly difficult. We have uh, 17 different laws for most everything. So how can we expect uh, actually to European regulations to be like like a real European standard that can be achieved in every country and implemented in every country. So, um, is there a way, a realistic way, in which these institutions can bring a standard to so that we can all uh, copy and paste in our countries? What do you think? Maybe you work in a little bit. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but um, the misconception might be that that if there's a European level legislation is then not being translated or is not being used uh, by, by, I believe, member states. Uh, well, what happens, uh, the compliance with law is always uh, something that has to be uh, assured it doesn't come automatically for a number of reasons. Um, then uh, the ways to ensure that are uh, following what happens with the pieces of legislation, uh, how the implementation goes, and, and the fact that the European Commission, so my employer, being the guardian of the treaties and being the guardian of how the um, uh, legislation is implemented, does execute this task and actually police the, the implementation. So, so there are ways to infringe um, uh, the incompliance with the pieces of legislation and so on. But for me, the bigger problem is that in order to have a piece of legislation that will be then legally binding for the member state, there has to be an agreement of member state, and here I'm coming to the cooperation part itself, to actually do something together and to have, for instance, binding common target for something. Um, unfortunately for the tourism and for the tourist policy itself, there are only very weak competences that are given by the member state to the European Union. So, so I have to say that uh, the Commission does quite Commission, but also um, uh, the Parliament and so uh, also cooperation between institutions. Uh, we're doing quite the magic within the limit the competences that we have to actually animate all of these things that are happening in the sustainable uh, sustainable tourism policy, for instance. Um, now the question and principal question is why is it so that member states do not want to? Uh, give more of the powers to, to, to the European Union, so the supranational body, um, uh, to say, for instance, okay, uh, every hotel has to be certified. It's not good that some hotels in Barcelona is only 5%, in Denmark is 70%. So, for instance, uh, but do we need it? I mean, do we really need to have European Union tell it? Isn't that common sense that the, um, I don't know, government of Spain or even uh, regional government uh, would do it on its own and decide it's a no-brainer, we have to have whole hotels certified because it's, it's a modern world, this is how it should work. Um, so it's always a question of where the balance of power should be and what should go up to the, to the European Union level, what is necessary to do better on the European Union level. I believe that sustainability, tourist sustainability is something that there is much more need for the discussion on the EU level, but it's again building very much on the fact of spreading good practices, working together, developing common standards and so on. Um, do we need a piece of legislation that would be legally binding on the EU level? Well, I'm not convinced myself because it's not necessary. It's the key to success, but that's my opinion. Okay, and I'll add on. Okay. Uh, just on, on that issue, I, I fully agree with what you just said, that it's not all EU competencies, but what we can do on the European level to spread those good practices, 
and, and to elaborate uh, guidelines uh, so the member states, the regions and the cities know what to do and how to do because there are a lot of solutions mm -hmm. available, uh, they are not applied. So you showed the example of Copenhagen for cycling, it's also an example. I work also in projects in North West Europe uh, and to bring those good examples, setting European standard was one of our main objectives in the project Med Cycle Tour in the frame of the Mediterranean program. So it started with a small project uh, supported by uh, uh, DG Enterprise at the time, uh, by the Commission. Then we had the Interact project uh, uh, where we created common standards, but standards not in a sense of a legally binding standards, but standards in the sense of guidelines, which were applied from Spain until Cyprus uh, to create and develop cycle routes high-quality cycle routes, high-quality cycling-friendly services, also promotion and marketing materials. So the standards were kind of voluntary, uh, but we used the best practices from Northwest Europe where it was normal. Uh, and we were really pleased to see that different regions made the decisions and reallocated budget to realize them. So for example, Andalusia, 150 million euro to realize that piece of infrastructure. So starting with the relatively small project setting guidelines supported by the Commission, spending a few hundred thousand euro on it, that we, were man we managed to uh, reallocate 150 million euro in one specific region and more in the other ones along the whole Mediterranean to realize a sustainable uh, transport uh, and sustainable tourism uh, tool, a cycle route. So that's, that's mm -hmm. how I imagine more the role of the European Union um, on this, this aspect and much more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, also, we, we also think uh, from private sector that it's okay. It's necessary to uh, implement EU regulation, but the problem of EU regulation is that we cannot involve the south or the east of the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean region. And in order to to improve the, the sustainable tourism, we have to uh, cooperate all together because we cannot be faster in the north, in the north, and not including uh, the south or the east of the Mediterranean. Because the problem is, um, when we work only, for example, for, the, for some EU program, as a MED program, we, have, uh, um, we can involve only um, countries from the, north, from the north of the Mediterranean. But uh, there are lots of beneficiaries from the south. But um, we think the best is to involve, um, so to involve uh, public authorities, uh, or also EU Commission, but I, we think the initiative should come mainly and first of all if, from the private sector um, to yes to involve, and after we can do some EU regulation and to work with uh, to do some agreement. Uh, that's also why, for example, in Ascame we do lots of uh, memorandum of understanding with uh, countries. Uh, of the South and also with other international organizations in order to involve more countries, not only some, some region or some specific country. Okay, Octavi, and then I, have, I think we have one question from the audience, maybe, and then I think this should be, that should be the last question because we ran out of time, but Octavi. Yeah, um, let me start saying that um, I want more Europe and I want a better Europe. And when saying that, uh, I have to say that I'm not very confident about our capacity. And if our capacity is the one, for example, that we saw facing a tragedy such as the one we have with the refugees, what can we do at talking about sustainability? Um, we have built an organization in which um, relationships are more among states than in a not a national relationships. We have built a, an organization with a strong intergovernmental relationships, but not transnational relationship. And that's the reason why I said that I'm not very confident. And I think the role of a better Europe must be not thinking about the possibility of having a fantastic transnational route about cheese. The role must be um, thinking about what can we do in front of uh, climate change. And we are um, in another part of the game. 
that's my uh, my opinion. Okay. Okay. So the last question I think comes from the I think we have we have one question from the audience maybe. Was it? Yeah. Ah, it's here. Okay. <laughs> Mike, gentlemen. Oops. Ah, okay. So I think this is. Uh, oh. Ah, we had it on the on the screen, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. So uh, uh, if you, if we can read this one first, maybe. Is it is your is your question? Is it your question? No. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. So maybe we we'll do this one first. It's okay. Is it okay? Ah, oh, this is going to be hard. The question. We will translate. In French. French, don't worry. Yeah, French. Sorry. We can take a question in French. You can take it. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, please. C'est une intervention plutôt qu'une question. Oh. Intervention. It's your choice. Okay. Alors, tout d'abord, moi, je, je crois que les politiques qui sont engagées pour promouvoir le tourisme, ils devront être engagés pour, pour promouvoir le, le, le tourisme. Euh, Chez nous au Maroc, euh, le, le, la loi organique qui, 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 qui organise le, le conseil régional, la régionalisation, a donné une compétence très importante aux, aux élus, aux conseils régionaux pour promouvoir le, 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 le tourisme. Et moi, à mon avis, il faut que le tourisme soit... soit il faut promouvoir le tourisme dans les deux rives de, de la Méditerranée, nord et sud. Parce que on est, la preuve, moi je suis là pour promouvoir le tourisme chez nous au Maroc, dans la région orientale, parce qu'on a des potentialités très importantes. On a une rive, on a des potentialités très importantes. Et on aimerait bien que, 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 que avoir des partenariats avec, avec, nos, avec les conseils régionaux pour, pour promouvoir cette, ce tourisme. OK. Et merci. Donc, si je le fais bien, c'est comme... We are you just um, uh, reinforcing this idea we were talking about about uh, coming together with different ideas, but more uh, widely, right? Like not just uh, Europe or South of Europe, but also the North of Europe and, and the North of Africa. Is that right? So uh, I don't know if you have a, a particular vision on, on this, like more even even more global agreement on, on some certain measures, or even, or even the creation of uh, some kind of organism, right? That was the question, yeah. I think, of trying to get these kind of measures to more a, a bigger number of countries. Is this even possible? If we were talking about the difficulties of doing this in Europe, even in Europe. Uh, I, I suppose it's even harder to do it more broadly, right? Anyone? <laughs> we also have these. Uh, uh, do, do anyone want to take this one, or it's, uh, it's more of a statement? Sorry. No. <laughs> okay. So, and we also have this one last from the audience. Can we can we do that? Uh, so, uh, do you think that European competences on tourism policies should be in sunset? Um, we, 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 we also say yes. We, yes. <laughs> We say yes to that. I mean, we've, we've already. Uh, I mean, we've covered this also. <laughs> if I may say, I mean, I'm, I'm biased on this one, of course, because that means that I will guarantee that this will guarantee my job. Uh, to <laughs> okay. But, uh, okay, it seems fair. But I mean, the switch from just regular tourist policy to more sustainability, it's even more reasons to actually give some more competences to the EU level. Because why? I mean, now European Union already has competences in climate in environment, including biodiversity, for instance, the Natura 2000 uh, phenomenon, um, uh, even in things like waste, for instance, so there are certain targets on, on, uh, that, that affects directly the tourist sector, directly um, the life of hotelier and restaurateur, yeah. uh, not only. Um, this is already a different thing than just busting, boosting Figures of how many arrivals, how many tourists will I have in my in my in my uh, uh, accommodation in my region? And this is this is a completely different story. That was, you know, just boosting the figures of tourist visitors and so on. That that's okay, uh, still very much tourist policy. But this is okay. Destinations are competing between each other. This is very fair that destinations, regions, countries are, are dealing with that on their own. And, and this is, I don't think that we should have, as the European Union, should have competence on this one. But specifically on sustainability, since it's really 
for everyone. It's really, uh, I mean, saving resources, uh, respecting biodiversity, give, giving good practices as regards uh, destination management uh, from the sustainability perspective. This is something, it's a different ball game. So that's why I think it's getting time that it would be really useful that member state would rethink what is being given to the European Union, what is maintained in their own hands. But that's my private view. Thank you. Quick one. Can I? Very quick. Oh, because I am excited in the middle between more Europe and better Europe. Uh, I want to try to, in some way, to say something related to because uh, discussing about competencies on tourism, uh, you see that, for instance, uh, in Italy, we have a minister, a ministry of tourism, without competencies, because the competencies are in the regions. Okay how we can imagine more Europe if in Italy we have a region that are competing between them. Obviously, this is another uh, aspect of our uh, bad perspective, bad perspective of tourism in our uh, society. Every politician wants more tourists, because it means more money, means more jobs. Crisis. We need crisis. There is a lot of research paper that demonstrate that more crisis doesn't mean more jobs. It's for sure cruisers. Uh, sorry, my crochet. I say that. <laughs> which is, which is <laughs> surely better. If you want, I can continue in Italian, but uh, let me know. Uh, ju just, uh, just to say, uh, just to say that. I think that we have to change the, this storytelling related to tourism. It's completely a fake. And we have to try to have more, for sure, more Europe. We need more Europe in a moment where some European countries are asking less Europe, or a weak Europe at least. And once, every time that we say a better Europe, this depends by national members doesn't depend by European Commission, because at the end of the day, European Commission Act is not the responsible. Our member states that decide that the that European Union is as it is. And I think that our, as international player, all of us, we have to continue to ask more Europe, for sure, more Europe, at least in defining policies and then giving freedom. Because Europe is an destination, not Sicily, my region, for instance, or uh, Lazio region or other issues. It's, it's Europe destination. I have to, in, we have to try to improve our societies at the end in a better life. Okay. Well, I'm um, sorry we don't have more time, but uh, thank you all for being here, so, and thank you all for coming, so uh, if you could please join me in a round of applause for our panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you.